Teamsters, it's Gav and we've got part two at last of this uh, tutorial on this Napoleonic Italian line infantryman. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, tutorials when, when they occur really, so um, not that I think I've got a, a massive uh, <laughs> a massive uh, queue of people waiting for these uh, these tutorials, but, you know, it'll just be as and when I can do them. It's mainly because if the house is noisy, um, you know, it's uh, it's difficult to get a video together. That's been more more the reason than anything. So anyway, let's get on with it. Today we will be painting the pointy stick. We're going to be painting the uh, green piping and the the collar and that. Uh, probably the uh, the the red on the uh, the uh, cuff here and probably. The uh, at least the base coats on the pack and the the musket. So guys, let's have a bit of a zoom in. If we can get it a bit closer for you, and we shall begin. Um, today's colours, I should have said, are uh, Vallejo um, black green and. Uh, Vallejo olive green, uh, both model colour. Now th there is a huge contrast between both colours um, but I want to use the black green as a as a base. So I'll just get this, make sure you can see what we're doing. As I say it's not, as you've probably heard it said a million times, it's not easy painting over the top of a of a camera and keeping it all in focus you see again I just dab off the off the excess excess paint off the brush uh, the one thing I'd caution you with on doing it on your hand like I do Especially on the inside of your hand is very occasionally uh, you will touch your that nice wet painted area onto a figure, and I've done that a few times, which can be a bit annoying, especially on a white uniform. I mean, obviously, try and get the Try and get the uh, the piping in one sweep if you can, because as we all know, trying to go back often ends up with a with a line that goes all over the place. Again, I know it's probably cheating, but. See that's way too thick. And that'll probably have to be uh, have to be uh, thinned out with um obviously don't try and put um like ivory straight on that to try and make that, that line thinner because it's not gonna work and just bleed through so you'll have to go all the way back to your base colour. Got a figure just to the side of me at the moment that I'm uh, I'm checking and I've I've done a I'm running a figure along the side of it and that's uh, it's just for the tutorial more than anything but it might help yourself you know if you if you're doing a regiment which are more or less all the same and, and when I say uh, doing a regiment you know it's, it's more more for the piping than anything so you know where everything without having to constantly keep looking up stuff. Do yourself a almost like a practice figure first. You've got something to work off, a bit of a template. As I say, you don't be afraid to put your figure in all angles to get where you want to go. Got a bit of overspill there, but that'll go. That'll be hidden under a grey when we uh, we do these uh, straps in a cold white. Thank you. 
there's all the, always a problem when you're working with. So I've gone over it again. This is working behind a camera, unfortunately. <laughs> I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of touching up on this uh, on this figure. Not much we can do about it. I was going to say editing is our friend, but you know what I'm like for what I call fire and forget videos. <laughs> just, just uh, I ain't got the time to to be spending, you know, spending a couple of hours editing a video. I think this will probably be the limit of Gav's Gav's video. Uh, in how, how well they're going to come out. I don't think you can expect to get much more out of me <laughs> than, what we've, uh, than what we've got. This is the problem of, it's not so much when you're painting, it's, it's, it's the distance a lot of the time you are from, you know, having to look over the camera. I've got a light fairly low down because I, I must admit I can never seem to get my light levels right. Again, be as neat as you can, especially something like a white uniform, because you're only going to have to spend time cleaning it up afterwards. As I say, my excuse is I'm doing it over a camera. Again, I'm probably going to have to do some uh, some cover up work with it afterwards. Let's get this. Uh, this is called. When I'm painting the hat here. It's called the Bonnet de Police. Yes, I'm sorry to all my French friends out there. I've just murdered that, but <laughs> that's as best as I say. With no language skills, that's as best as I can come up with. And uh, the guys, from what I can gather, favoured this. They had that again. I'm going to butcher this now. Was it the Pockel Helm, which is like the the pie, the pie cross type of um, hat that they also wore later on and from what I can gather the guys much preferred this this actual hat and that's what you'll see rolled up on some of the sculpts whether it's from front rank or other other manufacturers you'll see a a roll underneath the cartridge box and that that's this uh, bonnet de police or or Pockle Helm that's um, that's rolled up with a couple of straps. Now there's often, as usual with everything, when it involves uniforms and people's opinions. Um, People say, you know, what was really the Italian green? Um, I'm going off the Rawkins uh, guides, and he says that they were actually quite dark green. Um, we're going to lighten these up, obviously. Uh, so it's really up to you. You take your pick what you think's right. I will guarantee you somebody will shoot you down for it. But uh, just stand tall. All you, I always think all, all you can do is your best. You know, you can always have somebody come up telling you that you've got that those buttons are the wrong colour or you know the piping's the wrong colour. I mean, all you can do is your best. So get go out there. You know, obviously get as much information as you can on a subject, and then fill your boots because you can only do your best. And the problem is, for anybody that's giving you an earnest opinion on something, there'll be somebody else giving you an earnest opinion the other way. So, you know, it really, you know, you, you've just got to go with your gut instinct at the end of the day. And obviously, we all make mistakes as well. And what you think might be right, you might change your mind later on. But don't take things to heart. 
because it's it can be really crushing um, especially for people when they're just starting out doing historicals you know people all uh, Will pull you up for this, that, and the other, and it's not just a Napoleonic thing. They'll, you know, whether it's World War II, um, ancients, it doesn't matter. You know, they'll pull you up for it, and that's just pe people's natures, unfortunately. So, you know, go out there, source your best. You know, f find different sources. If you haven't got, um, obviously, the money to buy lots of different ones, I mean, I would, I would recommend the Rawkins guides for you. They're on a so you, to see, you know what I'm like with technology, CD-ROMs, and they, uh, they, they unfortunately they haven't got the French one out at the moment, they're all done in the 70s and 80s I believe, and he's just redoing them all, so whether he brings a French one out, I don't, I don't even know if there is a French one, but the French, Prussians and British I think aren't out there, but all the minor states, and when I say minor that's not uh, knocking anybody's country, that's just as in like in Napoleonic uh, period so all those that were vassal states to to Napoleon's France like your Italians Croatians or the German uh, minor states right we're just going to do the piping on these turnbacks now as I say you're going to have to expect me to clean this up afterwards because it is very difficult I'm going to be putting our olive on after this sorry I'm going out of focus Again, with the piping, it depends. I usually try and go in inside the the sculpt, if that makes sense. You know where it um, where it goes down into the next layer of metal. Um, as a bit of a guide for yourself as you as you're working. And it's patchy in places a lot of the times you will be able to get with a bit of practice you will get that one sweep all the way down and that's your best friend when you're doing piping if you can do it all in one hit um, it'll make life so much easier for you but I don't get it all the time um, and as you can see here it's patchy I mean a lot of it is yes I'm, I'm doing it over the top of the camera Also, the, as my silence there, hold your breath, literally as you're uh, you're doing it. That'll also help you. And obviously, if I'm doing a straight line, I've, I literally have my hand jammed into the not not overly jammed into the into the work surface because obviously you'll start trembling. But just keep it nice and still like that, and uh, take a breath and just hold it and then one stroke if you can all the way down it will come with practice it just takes a bit of practice and I'm sure if you're doing a a brigade of a brigade or a division of uh, Napoleonics that practice will come fairly, <laughs> fairly soon you'll be doing a lot of them something like this way this is awkward, see, so I, what I'll normally do is brace my, I'll go right and hold the ferrule of the brush, that's the metal piece of the brush. I'll put, rest one finger on, on to the finger of the other hand. It just allows me to do a couple of dabs like that in a tight place. So again, it's all just finding a way that's best for yourself. With these epaulettes, these are called bastion epaulettes. 
and uh, like they've got like a, a slight point to them, and it replicates the bastion on something like a star fort. You know where the guns would be. If you've ever seen a star fort before. So guys, that's the. Uh, have to look again. That's the uh, black green Vallejo. Um, I believe we've got all the bits. Let me just have a check on our friend here on to the side of me. Yeah, I believe that's uh, that's correct. I'm just looking. There would be piping on the top of the uh, turnbacks there, but I think that's hidden by the strap. So we're going to go with that. I think so. On the next, uh, next, we're going to stop the video for a second, and I'll be back when we'll be putting the the olive, uh, the olive green on. Okay, guys, back in a minute. Right, guys, we're back, um, and we're just placing some highlights on our piping. It might need to go over another. Another attempt, we'll see. And this one's a bit awkward because they these two lines go down. We'll see. I have done that. I've put a another coat of olive grey on. Well, first coat of olive grey on that uh, collar. Probably could have done with going up, maybe slightly not so dark green. And I'll guarantee you, because I didn't write it down, that I've stuffed the colour up on the on the test figure. <laughs> so I've probably gone maybe one shade darker than I would have liked. But hey ho, it is recoverable. I'm roughly getting actually the colour I want with some of the shading in. So working from the top down, we'll go on these bastions now, or epaulettes, I should say, really. I'm going to leave a couple of dots underneath the straps till uh, I'm off camera, because that's just going to that's just going to mess up. You know it is. You don't have to be overly clever with the uh, the piping on the cuffs in the sense of you know worrying about all either covering the, the base colour over completely or not. It will darken and it will show through in places which is probably a, a good thing. Sorry, I keep going out of shot. Oh, get some fresh fresh paint loaded on the brush. I'm gonna probably have to cut in with some more white on this uh, this rear pocket, because that's looking really messy. Just as you teach yourself to paint, you've then got to teach yourself all over again how to paint behind a camera. Are we seeing with my thumb in the way? And obviously there's always a way that you, as we said, you you know, I've got a particular way I hold the, the figure to paint, you know, for, for things like this. Um, when I'm just painting normally, and it's hard to uh, to get out of habits when you pick up a figure to do behind a camera. I mean, because it's a light colour, um, obviously you don't want to go too light with the green in one go because. It would probably bleed through, but if you can get a happy medium with a green that you like, maybe on a test figure, or even just uh, just painting a, a strip of, you know, plastic card, sprue, whatever you've got, 
um, you might be able to do all the piping in just one colour. Um, but I do normally prefer to like to lay a base coat down and with what, whichever piping colour I'm doing, whatever nationality. Right, um, we're going to give that colour now. It's dried out under the lights. We're going to give that colour another go. What I we'll, might well do with this collar is do the very high points, edges of the collar. I might well give them a an even lighter colour. Right, guys, that's our uh, that's our piping done. Obviously, I say I'm not going to lie to you. I will be cleaning it up because obviously it's not good enough for my for what I, I believe is my standard. So we'll be giving that another go. Just tidying up in places, but before we do that, we're going to go on to the uh, the backpack. I think. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Um, we're going to just have a, a go on on the backpack. This is going to be a long video for what, it, what I'm actually showing you. Really, I know, but um, we're not going to be painting the whole backpack now. It will just be the base colour. Um, because I, I do understand these videos to go on forever. It's trying to find a happy medium. I'm useless at, at editing. I tried to edit and I even tried speeding one of these up like I've seen other people do and I just haven't been able to nail it yet. You know what I'm like for technology. So you may just have to wait for that. Once I can get how to actually speed and have everything up then uh, then uh, you might not be sitting there bored out your out your skulls now this is a burnt umber I'm using here with a tiny bit of black in it again go for your life with what you want to you know what colors you want to do your backpacks um, what I would normally suggest for well suggest but what, what I normally do um, is if you've got a fairly plain backpack that hasn't got any any strapping on it you have to be sometimes a bit artistic with things in the, in a sense of yes you want historical accuracy and all that um, but sometimes it's what's what works on the figure as well um, so what I'm trying to say is you can have these backpacks in a, in a couple of different ways I think my own opinion is whatever whatever cow hide they got out there they used you know um, yeah it'd be nice to see every you know everyone always has a, a brown backpack in that but to me it depends whatever they they use these were obviously the the uh, skin was on the inner and the fur was on the outer which is what gives the backpacks this rough appearance just to represent like the fur now what they'd have is um, tapes around the edge which I've now painted all over and you can't see properly I'm mean, again I'm talking this for beginners you know more than you guys that do it do them day in day out but these are tapes and they're there to keep the, the you know the, the sides of the, um, the the skins together now they could be just a normal like leather brown or they could actually be uh, white uh, what I would suggest is if you've got a lot of things where you've got white straps on and white buckles here you see if you if you start painting too much um, other white bits on you lose the distinction of everything um, so what I normally do with my backpacks is paint them a couple of different ways if I'm showing this is a campaign feel this guy is here this is what they they've sculpted them as so I'd normally do maybe a mix of uh, colored backpacks just like they've literally you know picked up three or four different types so you could you could do it so that your backpack has like a that the brown but with the white uh, fur in as well as you would see cows have and uh, you'll see in pictures and whatever um, but the only problem with that is if you've got a lot of white straps everything then merges into each other and that's why I say about go a bit artistic you know sometimes you have to think what what it looks like I mean don't get me wrong you know on a 12 foot table you know um, in, in mass is, is it going to really make any difference probably not but I'm just saying really from the painting aspect of it you know the fun of painting so this one 
is fairly clear. It's got nothing hanging off it, no cups, you know, firewood out underneath the straps, pans, pots, food, sausages, you name it. A lot of manufacturers have them hanging off the backpacks. Um, this one I'm going to keep in plain brown. Uh, we'll be highlighting the fur and obviously we've got the uh, the white strapping to do. The tapes will also um, be brown as well. And uh, on a, on another vid I'll uh, I'll show you obviously the completed uh, the completed pack. Make sure you cut all those undercuts here because I will guarantee you'll miss something, which I <laughs> I no doubt will behind this uh, behind this camera. The last time I did this, uh, I've got far too much water on my brush. Dry your brush off, and that will pick get picked up. See how it gets picked up? Doesn't do it any favours. Huh? It's because I haven't put my normal piece of tissue. It's off to one side, and I can't do it without <laughs> crossing over the over the camera. Right, we're going to call that. We're going to call that uh, done uh, for now because uh, it's it's not um, it's not how I want it to be. So I'm going to have to muck around with this a bit. And what I think I'll do is on the next video that I do, I will probably paint the backpack uh, complete, uh, show you it as a as a completed uh, item, and then move on to the musket. Um, if that's okay with you guys. So again. Uh, Rounding off, do the piping however you want to do it. As I say, there's a big debate on light or dark greens for Italian piping and the Italian jackets when they would when the, some jackets were green. Um, so go out there, do your research online if you can't get the books. Um, get Rawkins Italian one; it's fantastic. Uh, just puts like in Amazon or. Um, uh, I can't remember the place now. I've got got mine. I think it was Amazon, um, and you you can pick them up uh, very very reasonably, and you can just load them up on your computer. Uh, so go with whatever green you want. This is black green with a a olive green on top. However, I do think I've probably gone a shade too dark for the base coat, which I'm now paying for. Uh, the backpack here I've just used um, uh, brown umber. A burnt umber, I should say, which is another Vallejo model colour with a tad, tad of black in there. Uh, what I often use on my AB figures for the 1518s, I actually use Germo Cam German Camo Brown. Uh, that's another good one as a base coat. So, guys, thanks for stopping by and persevering through this video as I uh, ramble from one one end of it to the other. Uh, and uh, hopefully, it won't be too long before I get another one up. And we shall speak again soon. So thanks for stopping by, thanks for your patience, and I'll catch you again on another vid. Cheers.